Hello everyone. In line with our discussions on AM transmitters for DSB SC type modulators, today we will discuss ring modulator. Now here follows the schematic diagram of a ring modulator using diodes. It basically consists of four diodes in a ring arrangement D1, D2, D3 and D4. In addition on input side we have T1 transformer both input and output uh, windings are assumed to be same. We can call it audio frequency transformer. Likewise, we have T2 transformer at the output. Again, the windings are assumed to be same. And this transformer is known as RF transformer. On the left hand side of uh, T1 on the primary will apply the message signal and at the secondary of T2 DSB SC output will be observed and carrier is supplied through the center taps of the transformer windings. Now before starting our discussion further with working, let us make some assumptions. The very first assumption is that CT we are assuming to be a perfect square wave. Another one is that diodes are acting as perfect switches, means there are no losses, no barrier potentials no forward resistances etc. Third one is that diodes are switched on and off by carrier wave only. And last assumption we will be making is that amplitude of carrier is higher than the modulating signal amplitude. Now to better understand circuit operation, we will divide it into two modes. One is when no modulating signal is applied and second one is with the modulating signal. The first mode actually gives the idea how the circuit operates and how the carrier is being suppressed. And second mode is important to get the DSB SC output. No modulating signal means empty here is zero. Means input to this circuit, the modulating input to the circuit is zero. The operation in this mode can be further divided into two different cases. This is case one when carrier is positive in polarity and case 2 when carrier is negative in polarity. Now we have already made that assumption that uh, CT is a square wave. Now whenever the terminal connected to center tap of secondary of uh, T T1 is positive and uh, the another terminal is negative, the diode D1 and D2 will act as perfect switch or we can say as closed switches whereas D3 and D4 will act as open circuits. The equivalent circuit for the same can be seen here. Now the currents will start to flow through uh, these diodes in directions shown and at center tap of uh, primary of T2 the two currents will appear equal and opposite to each other. Hence resulting zero EMF to be induced in secondary winding of the T2 or alternatively we can say that carrier is suppressed at this point. So that is how it works for positive cycle. Now let us see for negative one. Now as the terminal connected to center tap of secondary winding of T1 goes negative and another terminal goes positive, the diode D1 and D2 will act as open circuit whereas the D3 and D4 will start to conduct so that the equivalent circuit will look like this. Again you can observe that the currents due to D3 and D4 are flowing in opposite direction at this terminal. So we can again say that the currents are equal and opposite in magnitude cancelling the effect of each other at this point or we can say that uh, there will be no EMF induced in secondary of the T2 or again we can say that carrier is fully suppressed or cancelled in this case. This is a hypothetical case, practically it depends on characteristics of diodes. If the diode characteristics are perfectly matched, we will see 100% cancellation of carrier but in practice that is not possible. That is why will observe only the suppression of carrier to some extent or it will be uh, to greater extent. 
so these two equivalent circuits actually has given us the idea how carrier is being suppressed in these uh, modulators let us now consider the second mode of operation when modulating signal is applied at the input of this circuit rest all the assumptions made above are same we know that the carrier is a square wave now on the basis of its polarity we can have two different cases so this is the case one as we were discussing in last mode the positive will appear on this terminal that means the secondary center tap of transformer t1 and uh, there will be a positive sign in here and this will switch on the diodes d1 and uh, d2 other two diodes will remain open circuited but as we can see the carrier is changing its value between positive and negative again and again so whenever it goes positive the diode d1 and d2 will get turned on and for all the negative cycles they will be off or they will remain off alternatively we can say that uh, they will be open circuited so at the secondary of uh, t2 we will be getting output only when the positive cycles arrives positive cycles of carrier arrives so here in green uh, you'll see the carrier pulses and this one is the modulated output so it is nearly following the masses signal amplitudes and the outputs will be observed only when the carrier is positive otherwise there will be no output in between for these particular diodes the output for negative cycle will be provided by d3 and d4 for understanding of that let us move on to case number two now for case two the message signal will remain as it is d1 and d2 are open circuited while d3 and d4 are conducting and obviously the positive uh, polarity will appear on uh, primary of t2 and negative will appear on secondary of t1 this will result in negative to appear on top end of secondary and positive on lower end of the secondary coil now if we notice the waveforms the upper one is the carrier wave same car carrier wave and lower one is the again modulating uh, sorry modulated output modulated signal now uh, for positive cycles the diodes will remain off but for negative cycle will observe uh, the outputs the amplitude variations that amplitude variations will be in proportion to the masses signal empty this will happen only for the negative uh, pulses of carrier now on combining these two modulated waves from case 1 and case 2 we get waveform c here waveform a is the actual modulating signal b is the carrier signal actual carrier signal c is the output of ring modulator and d waveform is the modulated waveform or modulated signal obtained after filtering waveform c in c waveform the purple colored pulses appears when d1 and d2 are on and d3 and d4 remain open circuited likewise the blue waveform appears when d3 and d4 are turned on and d2 and d1 remains open circuited when both the results are combined it will take a shape of uh, amplitude modulated wave now this waveform c obtained is subjected to filtering operation so that a more smooth output can be observed or obtained this wave is nothing but the dsb sc waveform here the maximum amplitude of this modulated wave uh, will be similar to the amplitude of maximum amplitude of masses signal itself and this portion that is carrier is fully eliminated but in practice full elimination is not possible so it is suppressed to maximum extent so that is how ring modulators are used for to generate dsb sc waveform that is all for now thank you and have a nice day